Welcome everybody to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson, and today I am filming my most requested video. All of the time, people send me messages, they leave comments, and they say, Shane, why don't you do a collaboration with Anthony, Mr. Candle Cafe himself? So today I have a Yankee Candle haul for you guys. Haul. Wrong. Start over. And it's not like Anthony and I haven't tried. We've tried on multiple occasions to get together to collaborate on a video project, but our schedules have always conflicted and it's never quite worked out. But I'm happy to say that today we finally made it happen. Now, I don't have Anthony with me here today. He's not going to like pop over my shoulder or something. But Anthony has sent me this box. This box right here. This is a mystery box. Inside of this box, well, it's a mystery, so I don't know what's inside this box, but I'm guessing there's candles and maybe some other things. I am super excited, so let us not waste any more time. Let's get to this. But one more thing. I also sent Anthony a box of my own, my own mystery box, loaded with candle companies, uh, products that I enjoy, uh, candles that I think Anthony will enjoy, and maybe some candles that might throw him off guard. So as soon as this video is done, make sure you swing over to Anthony's channel, Candle Cafe, and check out that video. I haven't even seen it myself. I'm excited to see all of his reactions. There's, a, there's some doozies in the box I sent him. So let's do this. Let's take out our semi-dangerous pocket knife and cut this box open. Now, Anthony and I have been friends since uh, my duration here on YouTube. He's always been incredibly supportive of my content. He also does not skimp on the shipping tape. All right. So let's take this box, we're gonna put it on the floor. All right, so right on top, we have a letter, handwritten. Check that out, that's some good penmanship, Anthony. That's not a sarcastic statement. I have uh, the penmanship of a, a two-year-old. Can two-year-olds write? No, they, they don't know the alphabet at that point. Anyway, Shane, finally the collaboration is happening, exclamation point. Thank you for your patience and for the great idea. I know this may seem like a random grouping of wax products, but I promise there is meaning behind them all. So immediately my eyes are being drawn to something very specific and it's pulling at the heartstrings already, Anthony. Uh, it's a little baggy. And inside that baggy we have two tarts, Yankee Candles, Angel's Wings. And on that bag, there's a note that says, in honor of Mary. Now, Mary is going to be in reference to Mary Tyler Moore. If anyone is subscribed here to The Candle Enthusiast, you know that Mary Tyler Moore is a common theme on this channel. I love Mary Tyler Moore. She sadly passed away all not too long ago. And I made a video tribute to her where I took Angel's Wings, a full jar by Yankee Candle. I visited her final resting place in Connecticut and I left the jar there for her so she could have her own personal jar of Angel's Wings. I'm gonna take the link of that video and put it in the description just in case uh, any of you folks out there are a huge fan of Mary Tyler Moore as I am. And just as a testament, uh, if you look at my mug, my candle enthusiast mug, it is obviously designed by the Mary Tyler Moore Show opening title. Whenever I smell this candle, I will think of Mary. And uh, as far as the fragrance is concerned, this is technically a Christmas candle or fragrance. It's a festive candle, so it can be quite hard to find. For me, this is perfect for all year around. There's really nothing in here that makes this exclusively Christmas. The concept of this candle has always been the angel's food cake. It smells like that light, fluffy, delicate cake loaded with not 
thick frosting. Not like the thick frosting from a can, but think about Cool Whip, right? Cool Whip, it may not be a culinary delight, but it's certainly a nostalgic delight, and it's inside of this candle. You get that shredded coconut on that cake, uh, and also you're getting wonderful caramel notes, you're getting additional sugar notes, and uh, some florals as well. Uh, I could burn this candle all day long. Anthony, thank you for being so thoughtful. A fantastic way to start this unboxing, but let's keep this going. Since you're a fellow Disney lover, I am. That's right, I'm in Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. Uh, I included three packs of Spire Side Wax Melts. I'm excited to hear your feedback on these. Uh, this is a company uh, as they describe it, a whimsically inspired company called Spireside, formerly known as Anthology Candle. Uh-oh, Anthony, did you steal one of my wax melts? You stole one of my wax melts. Well, that's perfectly fine. You stole another one. That's perfectly fine. So let's start with this one. Very curious to hear your thoughts on this. It is supposed to be a mix of cotton candy and fudge. That's interesting, that really is. Hope you don't mind I tried a cube. <laughs> he admitted to stealing a cube. The confectionery, that's an awesome name. Holy moly. One thing I have to say about Spireside is that if you are a high intensity candle person, like if you really need candles, you, 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 you demand that your candles uh, offer high intensity, Spire side. So what's coming through right off the bat, it's that hazy line of espresso bean and chocolate. You know, sometimes chocolate candles smell like coffee, and most often coffee candles smell a little bit like chocolate. And that's because uh, there is no such thing as a coffee essential oil. You cannot extract an essential oil out of coffee beans. Although this is supposed to be fudge, and I definitely smell a really rich, thick fudginess. It's kind of reading to me as if I ordered a sampling of a cappuccino flavored fudge cube or rectangular chunk. I, I don't know, what, what do you call one serving of fudge? I don't know. But definitely coffee, definitely a coffee shop because you have that hazelnut creamer, a little bit of dairiness going on, you know, when they're frothing up that steamed milk. As far as the cotton candy is concerned, I get the cotton candy because of the color. You get that spun sugar smell and the color is definitely suggesting that cotton candy. But if I take a step back, and think about where does this candle bring me, you know, emotionally? Is there a, a setting? Is there a place? There is. This kind of reminds me of a chocolate shop. A chocolate shop that serves coffee, serves high quality handmade chocolates. So I would certainly suggest this candle to anyone who enjoys their coffee with creamers, flavorings, you know, a hazelnut creamer, maybe some vanilla powder, and lots of sugar. Very nice. I would burn this candle. Uh, I take my coffee black, but that doesn't mean I don't love the smell of good old fashioned coffee shop. And even though the, the fragrance notes are cotton candy and fudge, uh, this is bringing me to that cafe. A little bit of cafe al fresco action happening here. Am I wrong? Let's continue. I had a hunch you were an Alice in Wonderland fan. How did you guess? So enjoy this blend of chamomile tea and tea honey cakes. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Anthony, I own a lot of Spireside candles and you have sent me three that I do not have. I gotta, I gotta put myself in this state of mind, right? I'm not, I'm not thinking Johnny Depp here. I'm thinking the animated classic. So definitely tropical fruit here. Tropical fruit as in mango, papaya, guava, pineapple for sure. And I wanna, I wanna throw that tropical grass in. I'm gonna throw, a, I'm gonna go back and say some lemongrass. Not standard starburst candies, but if you remember the tropical starburst candies, they still make them, I'm sure. Tropical flavored, bubblicious, concentrated, candy-esque. Uh, uh, exaggerated form of uh, tropical fruit. 
and exaggerated, concentrated, candy-fied, candy-esque, th those aren't bad words. And what does it say here? Tea honey cakes. Now, I would never come up with that on my own. I'll tell you what I probably would come up with. Cornbread flapjacks. They used to have them at IHOP. I'm sure they still do, or IHOB, as apparently they have changed their name. So Anthony's absolutely right when he says that I appreciate Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, the artwork, the whole design of the film uh, was created by one of my favorite artists of all time, Mary Blair. Mary Blair worked right underneath Walt Disney and she was responsible for so many Disney products, whether they be films, whether they be Disneyland rides. She designed the front of It's a Small World. She designed completely conceptually films like Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Sleeping Beauty. If you look at her artwork, it's amazing. And so to me, in my mind, where this brings me is to Mary Blair's artwork. Once again, Mad Hatter's Tea Party by Spire Side Candle. Oh yeah. One place, one resort that I've always wanted to stay in at Disney World, the Polynesian. So let's see if this creates a little bit of Disney World Polynesian tiki room effect or some kind of Moana Voyager on the water discovering new lands. Let's see, let's see what this does. Oh yeah, this is uh, a tropical cocktail. This is a big hurricane with a big twirly fun straw topped with probably um, the top of a, a pineapple or something like that. Maybe it's served in a pineapple. But not only is there tropical fruits here, uh, like pineapple, guava, dragon fruit, passion fruit, star fruit. I'm definitely getting those beach flowers, the lay blossoms, a stargazer lily, jasmine. I'll leave it at that, but there's a little bit of greenness too. When you're at Jamba Juice and you order the wheatgrass shot, that is like straight up chlorophyll. So there's a little bit of that green note, which really brings high authenticity to those floral aromas. So to me, this is like sitting on the beach, on the coast, the sun is falling, Moana's chilling out with me over here. I got my lay blossoms, I got my pineapple or coconut with a nice uh, refreshing beverage inside. That tidal wind coming in off the coast, pulling in the salty sea breeze, while also throwing in those beach flowers. Beautiful. I, if you don't know who Spireside is, if you haven't heard of them, and especially if you're a Disney fan, uh, check the description below. I'll link them up. They make uh, amazing products. They have an artist now who actually works for Disney and he's designing limited edition labels to a lot of their scents. And let me tell you, these labels, you know how I feel about labels. These labels are incredible. So let's keep this going. We got more tarts from Yankee Candle. Some of these I have tried, some of these I have not. So let's go through them. I included a mix of some favorites as well as some European UK exclusives. We have campfire treats. Campfire treats. So let me demonstrate to you what I'm smelling. Marshmallow, twig, fire. You know what, that's gonna take much too long. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We have pink grapefruit. So you get that classic Ruby red ocean spray, sweet and not so bitter. If you've ever smelled a pomelo before, pomelos are one of those, they look like ginormous grapefruits at the grocery, uh, the grocery store. Uh, and you can smell them from like a mile away. Star anise and orange. Star anise is one of those exotic spices. We'll find it in chai teas. It kind of smells like fennel. It kind of smells like black licorice. It's used in potpourris all the, the time and you can steep it with orange zest and other spices to really get a big aromatic experience in your home. A nice, rich, not so tart, which makes sense, right? Because if you're steeping oranges, you're really gonna get more of a zest experience. And definitely 
that star anise smell, but black licorice. If anybody has this candle, take it off the shelf, smell it, and see if you get that black licorice smell. But it's gonna be balanced out and brightened up by the fruit in this candle. There's probably also some lemon zest in here as well. We have lemongrass and ginger, tropical grass. This is something that we need to talk about, people, tropical grass. Uh, we know lemongrass, but we don't talk about citronella. We don't talk a lot about vetiver, but it's inside of all of our candles. And lemongrass and ginger, I love. I'm a huge hot toddy fan. Uh, I'm not trying to say that I'm, 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 I'm dropping whiskey all the time in my hot toddies. I just love the combination of ginger, lemon, tea, spices, lemongrass. I probably have ginger at least two times a day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So right off the bat, this is that freshly sliced ginger. It has a little bit of that spice. This is not like pickled ginger at all. Uh, this is not like ground ginger at all. This is not like the ginger that you would put into a pumpkin spice. To me, this is a sweet ginger and the, my mind goes right to the, that candy covered, candy coated, candy dehydrated uh, ginger, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, but uh, some form of candy or lozenge that is ginger that has been heavily sweetened. And that lemongrass definitely coming through. Uh, lemongrass, even like lemon verbena. And when I say lemon verbena, my mind always wants to go to Trix breakfast cereal. Just think of Fruit Loops or Trix, the, the, the lemon flavored uh, pellets or circles. That's essentially a, a candy-fied lemon verbena smell. And because this is so sweet, it definitely uh, is coming across like a little bit of good old fashioned General Mills or Kellogg's breakfast cereal uh, with that fresh sweetened ginger. Something that I just can't believe we do not have in the United States, macaroon treats. Now this year we saw a rainbow cookie which on the cover had macaroons on it. But I think we'll all agree, if you've smelled that candle, that when you when you put your nose to it, it smells like anything but uh, a French macaroon. And macaroons, I have such a warm place in my heart for them because when I was attending the Culinary Institute of America late at night, I'd go into the kitchen and they would leave out the, the pastry, the baker students, they would leave out all of the stuff that they created in class all day. And most of the time there were mounds, plates of macaroons, and I won't lie, I overdid it on multiple occasions, and I won't lie, I, I, I put some in my backpack on multiple occasions, but they were just gonna be thrown in the garbage. So macaroon treats to me is an incredibly authentic, authentic macaroon fragrance. When you smell it, you smell the, the baked quality of that pastry, that cookie, right? You almost can smell that it's crispy and crunchy, but you could also smell the parts of the cookie that is ooey and gooey, right? The almost undercooked part of the cookie, that granulated sugar, that cane sugar, and then that frosting in the center, that, that heightened level of vanilla, uh, frosting. If you like sweet treat fragrances, this is one that you're gonna need to have in your collection. And trust me, although Rainbow Cookie is awesome, it is not a replacement of this super decadent, buttery, salty, savory, sweet candle. I think I used enough adjectives to prove my point on how amazing that candle is. Paradise Spice. Now this is one I haven't, I don't even think I've smelled it. Uh, on the label, I see star anise. Uh, looks like we see some form of stone fruit. I'm guessing maybe it's an apricot or a, a peach. We have banana chips, perhaps. Oh my God, banana chips and uh, an orange slice. Now, I have to really open up this. Where's that knife? That semi-dangerous knife. Wow. You know, what's weird is this scent. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating, I'm not pumping this up, I'm not milking this. This smell, this aroma, this candle is reminding me of the Yankee Candle Village. When you enter the Yankee Candle Village in South Deerfield, Massachusetts, it's their flagship store, 
um, you walk into what's called the general market. It's a it's a recreated old time country market. It's what the Yankee Candle Village used to be all the way back in the early 80s. And inside of that room, they have jams and honeys and maple syrups. They have spices. They have pancake mixes. They have so many aromatic things. Um, you can spend the whole day just in the general store. And the cacophony uh, of smells that happen in that room, that cornucopia, if you will, of arom aromas in that room is reminding me of this candle because you do get those baking spices. I see the star anise, and I'm not saying I don't smell it, but I think there's a whole lot more baking spice happening here. A little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg. Could there be, could there be a touch of um, maple syrup in here? Is banana, banana chip in here? You know, I can kind of see that. I would never come up with that on my own. You have a very concentrated form of fruit here, stone fruit action. This is a very pleasant scent. And if anything at all, like I said, uh, this reminds me of uh, walking into a Yankee Candle retail store, but more, more specifically, walking into that general store at the Yankee Candle Village in South Deerfield. Uh, do you own this candle? And do you agree with me? Is there anything you can add? Is there anything I left out? Let's that in the comments below. I need your folks' feedback because I'm doing this super quick, super fast evaluation here. Uh, I'm gonna dive deeper into this box. All right, we have some candles by Kringle Candle. These are gonna be daylights. Or actually, they're not daylights, they're wax melts. I don't know if Anthony remembers that it's one of my favorite Kringle scents of all time but I do remember that it is one of his, Apple Cider Donut. How could I not? Apple Cider Donut. One of my favorite treats any time of the year. And we see the, the Macintosh apple included in the label here with a glass of apple cider in the back. So again, I'm looking for authenticity. Oh my God. But this smells so real. Big time apple cider, dehydrated apple, apple skin, crystallized cinnamon sugar, very soft cinnamon sugar, coffee cake crumble, apple pie crust, big time pastry donut, cakeish donut. And that apple, man, it's so great because it's coming through in a few different ways. You're getting that apple cider, you're getting that oxidized apple pie filling, but you're also getting super fresh. Macintosh apple as well. Very complex candle. Look, I grew up in apple country. We would frequent uh, the apple farms. Nearly every family and farm has their own apple cider donut recipe. Some of them make them by hand, some of them have these fancy machines, but either way, the families take pride in uh, the, the recipe of their apple cider donut. And you, when you buy them, it's not like they're a week old or a day old. You're watching, they're made to order. They make the donut right in front of you, put it in a bag, it's steaming hot and aromatic. And if there's ever a candle that is authentic to that experience of living in apple country and buying apple cider donuts, it's Kringle Candles Apple cider donut it is monstrous too totally authentic in my opinion if you are a kringle collector and if you enjoy autumn fragrances uh you really should own this one and if i'm not mistaken there is a pumpkin spice apple cider donut which is awesome but i still to this day i still say this apple cider donut is better in my own personal opinion it's my opinion folks what do we have next we have some bubble wrap i've never seen you review crossroad candles that's because i haven't on your channel before and i figured you can't go wrong with cotton candy a disney classic absolutely cotton candy was my favorite uh carnival uh bizarre boardwalk treat growing up it still is all right, so Crossroads, original 
designs, cotton candy. And the first thing I love about this candle is that it's blue, it's not pink. If I go on the boardwalk and I'm, I'm, and I'm getting cotton candy, you better believe it's gonna be blue, maybe purple. I, I did a Disneyland uh, treats video where I tried candy corn, cotton candy. And something that I found was Mickey Mouse, candy corn, cotton candy. Check that out. Does this cotton candy taste like candy corn or does it taste like cotton candy? I taste like cotton candy. Let me try one more time. It's got two wicks. Oh yeah, you know what? This is cotton candy, but even more than that, it's blue. What does blue smell like? Right here. And let me elaborate. Let me elaborate. Blue Jolly Rancher, like blue raspberry. What is blue raspberry? Blue raspberry is not a thing, but blue raspberry has a specific taste, right? Or slush puppies. I don't think, is, is there a name to blue slush puppies? Or remember Icy, like the polar bears? You had a choice between red and blue. I don't think they called it cherry or blueberry. They may have, but when I was a kid, I, I said, I want the blue slushy. This has that definitive uh, cultural, pop culture, what we know in society as candy, uh, candy flavored, beverage flavored blue aroma. It does have that light caramel note because if you think about it, cotton candy is, it is a caramelized, a caramelizing process. Um, what you're doing is you're melting the sugar and cooling it really fast. A lot of you guys know this, but that's how you make cotton candy. That's how you get it to, to, to turn into spun sugar. But in order to melt it, or when you melt it, you're, you're, you're sort of caramelizing those sugars, which alters the flavor, which makes it extra delicious and specific. But in my mind, I got the cotton candy on the paper cone in my hand. In this hand, I have my blue raspberry uh, uh, slush puppy and I'm waiting online to get on that Ferris wheel. So thanks for introducing me to a, a brand new company. Really appreciate that, Anthony. Now we have something in the box. This looks like the last item, but holy moly, this is a monster. Of course, I couldn't let you get by without trying Homeworks candles. Homeworks candles uh, from Harry Slacken. I've never even smelled a Homeworks candle before. Oh my God. So let's talk about Homeworks Candles real quick. Homeworks Candles, uh, the creator, Harry Slacken, probably most known for his collaboration with Bath and Body Works Candles. He, uh, if I'm not mistaken of his history, he created Bath and Body Works Candles for years, but then separated, I don't know how long ago it was, but only to return with his own brand. And since they have hit the streets, uh, they've been the talk of the town. Harry Slacken reached out to me recently via Instagram, uh, which is a huge honor. Uh, I think it was his way of saying, why aren't you talking about my candles? The first thing I have to mention that this is not a candle or just a candle. This is a piece of furniture. I mean, this is heavy. This is, this is a monstrosity. It's beautiful. It looks like Tell me that does not look like, like a circus tent. This aluminum lid. Yeah, this kind of looks like the awning that, you know, the awning that would go on top of a circus tent. Ooey, gooey, salted caramel. Ooey gooey. Well, you, you got me at ooey gooey. Oh my God. I need, I need my notebook. Uh, um, a lot of things are going through my head right now. I promise you, those of you who are watching, I have not pre-smelled these. I have not checked out the fragrance notes. There's, okay, I gotta I got start naming things before I, I, I forget, but r right off the bat, I'm getting caramel covered everything. So this is how I'm going to break this down. Take, take a saucepan, right? Take a saucepan. I want you to put a stick of butter into that saucepan. 
and I want you over medium heat to melt down that butter in that saucepan and then clarify the butter. Take off the, the foamy stuff on top, right? Uh, you'll have that straight up salty butter in liquid form. Now, I want you to add the brown sugar. Loads of it, light brown sugar, throw it in and wait for that, that, that caramel to melt. I'll wait, I'll wait for it to melt with you. Has it melted yet? Has it bubbling? Is it bubbling? Is it is it is it ooey gooey yet? Is it is it turning a, a darker color? Is the aromatics of that sugar changing? It is. All right. Now throw in a pinch of sea salt or kosher salt. And now take that and dump that entire ooey gooey concoction on uh, freshly popped popcorn. Toss it up in a bowl, wait for that caramel to dry, and you have that caramel, that homemade caramel covered kettle corn. And that is, in my mind, one of the greatest sweet treats you can ask for. And to me, this is so authentic. All of its components here, when it comes to the butter, when it comes to that true brown sugar caramelization, uh, so, so authentic. Let me remind you, I spent so much time in the kitchen uh, at the Culinary Institute of America smelling, smelling caramel being made every single day. Um, but if you want to get away and, and from that kind of homemade caramel and you want a little bit more nostalgia, I'm gonna remind you of a few things that uh, maybe are from your past that you remember. Do you remember cow tails? Oh yeah, cow tails, the little long strips of caramel candy, Werther's caramel candies. They were always buttery, they were always uh, rich in caramel. But there's something here that I have to talk about, butterscotch. Butterscotch, oh man. Uh, and butterscotch is not the same thing as caramel. It's, it's a different process in making it, but that combination of authentic caramel and authentic uh, butterscotch with the butter and the salt, this is, this is uh, straight up my alley and uh, I cannot wait to burn this, put this to the test. Uh, Homeworks Candle by Harry Slacken. Do yourself a favor, if you are really into candles and you don't mind spending a few extra dollars, I mean, I think you're getting your money's worth when you, when you see this and when you hold this in person, I think you'll understand. But beautiful packaging, beautiful concept, uh, super authentic fragrance, three wicks, uh, soy wax, and uh, like I said, this thing is like a piece of furniture. Uh, and this will be my first experience with uh, Homeworks candles. So Anthony, huge shout out to you for providing all of these candles. I truly appreciate it and I cannot wait to do another collaboration with you in the near future. And for those of you who have found this video because they were sent over by Anthony, make sure you hit that button subscribe. We got a lot of great content coming up, not only for the summer, but you know how it goes. The summer happens and then autumn's here, the Halloween, Christmas, we're going places. Not only do we talk about candles on the Candle Enthusiast, but we're a destination-based channel. We go to attractions, amusements, museums, fun off the beaten path places, and I have uh, an amazing agenda lined up uh, for this year. A lot of fun, very festive uh, videos to be filmed and made. Uh, and to everybody else, thank you for sitting down with me and sharing my passion of aroma or in this case, candles. I hope you had a blast, I certainly did. I will be seeing you soon, folks. I really will be very soon, because I got a lot of stuff I need to post. Uh, but until then, be good, and thanks again. Welcome <clears throat> to the candle. <clears throat> Let me try that again. <clears throat>